Yes, my people, it's great to see you again. And I'm super excited because now we're starting to get into the thicker things. We're really starting to push on on this journey. Now, I know some of you are reaching exam season. <laughs> that time when you really, really end up in the box if you're someone that's like me, because exams were a big trigger for me. And they'd usually end up in me getting these really judgmental and pessimistic voices. And as a result of that, I ended up being in the box and not really being able to perform at my best. And now I don't want that to happen to you. Now, in your Spark workshop, you will now be familiar with something called mind traps. And mind traps are just the different ways that our judgment and our pessimistic voices might manifest. And by manifest, all I mean is the way they come out, the way they are realized, the way they sound. And there are six different mind traps that we can think about and that can be manifested. Now, instead of just sitting in front of a camera and telling you all about these mind traps, I thought to myself, you know what? When I was going through all of them, I can actually relate to all six of them in different ways. So instead of me just sitting there and telling you about it, I thought I'd introduce you to some of these people because they're actually personalities in their own. So without further ado, let's go in there, let's meet some of these personalities, but I must warn you, some of these people, they're not really that nice. So be careful. Right, let's go. Hello, Mr. Avoida. My name's Carl. Thank you for joining us today. How are you? I'm all right. Okay, thank you, Mr. Avoida. Now, we haven't got long, so let's get straight into this. I want you to imagine a scenario where you are in school and you've got end of terms coming up for all of your subjects. So you've got exams coming up. And you've just discovered that you've lost your French book with the vocabulary that you were going to be tested on and that your science tests are now going to be in two days time instead of in two weeks time like the other subjects. How do you deal with a situation like that? Well, that's, that's kind of unfair that the science test has been moved forward. I mean, I was gonna revise this weekend, but now that's, ugh, school's just so long, man. So, what will you do about the fact that the test is this week? Well, it's not my problem, innit? I didn't, I didn't move the test forward, so there's not really much I can do about it. Well, it sort of is your problem because um, aren't you going to fit in any revision time? <sighs> Don't know, maybe. Okay, so what about French? Um, how are you gonna deal with the situation about losing your book? I'll, get, I'll probably find a book somewhere. It's got to be somewhere. But this, this type of stuff is always happening to me, man. That's why I don't even get stressed about it. It's, it's what it is. Yeah, thanks for talking to me. Um, yeah, that, that will be all. So, what did you notice there? <laughs> I told you these people aren't that nice. That was the classic avoider. And for a lot of you listening, you're probably quite familiar with that voice. Because I know I am. They didn't really want to take responsibility for the situation. They always wanted to blame someone else and they really just wanted to avoid the situation at large. And that's something that can often happen when those type of thoughts are going through our minds and we mustn't get caught in that mind trap. Hello, my name's Carl. How are you? Um, I'm, I'm okay. Um, can I just say from the off though that I'm not usually good in these, these scenarios, um, like cameras, interviews, it's, it's all just a bit weird for me. So yeah, just thought I'd let you know. That's fine, don't worry. It's just me and you having a conversation. Okay, also, just so you're aware, um, the person you spoke to before seemed to be speaking for a really long time. Um, yeah, I think it's important just to let you know that you're not gonna be able to get much out of me. I'm not really a good speaker and communicator, so yeah, don't expect to be here for as long as the, the previous guy. Right then. So, I want you to imagine that you've been given an exciting project to start in your local community. And the aim of the project is to have an impact on other people in your local area. And luckily, you've been put in a team with all of your friends. However, the deadline for this project is quite tight. It's really close. How would you deal with a situation like this? Start a project in the community? What, what does that even mean? How are we gonna, we're just, how are we gonna be? You know what, and you know, how, why are the school always giving us new deadlines and new things to do? Like, there's no way we're gonna be able to get these things done. It's too difficult. Hard, it's hard enough being a teenager and having to get these deadlines done and having to prepare for exams. And now they're asking us to do stuff in our local. Basically, there's no way we're gonna be able to do this. And you've put us in a group with our friends. My friend, we're not gonna get any work done. We're just gonna mess around. This is gonna be an epic fail, just forget it. Um, so you're saying you wouldn't even try? Yes! I mean, wait, no! I mean, oh, this is too confusing. Can we just start again? That was the wrong answer, wasn't it? Oh, all right, cool. Can we just start again? Let's just start again. Forget this. Okay, cool. That's it then. 
Now I'm guessing that one was easy. Everyone can notice a doubter when they see it. Now that mind trap was one of the judging mind traps in which he never really wanted to believe in himself or what he was actually capable of doing. And it's something that we always come across when we're always doubting ourselves and always being quite judgmental about ourselves as well. So just keep an eye out for that mind trap too. Hi there, thank you for joining me today. My name's Carl. Hi, it's great to be here. So I want you to imagine that you're in a PE lesson and you're having a really fun interactive lesson and your teacher says now it's time to play dodgeball in teams. And the team that you've been put on has got more than five players. So you're going to need to rotate it to make sure everyone gets a go. But this game is for double points. And so, you know, in order to win this game, you really, really need to play. However, there are a couple of teammates who haven't played and they seem to be quieter students. What would you do in this situation? Well, for the sake of the team, of course, I've got to convince someone to let me play because <laughs> we're not losing. Um, don't get me wrong, I won't be rude or anything, but I'll just use my charm to let one of the quieter students know that, listen, I'm the captain, I need to play now. Because <laughs> trust me, no one's be beating me at dodgeball. Really? And what do you think your teammates would think about that? Hmm, let me think about this. Well, in the moment, they might disagree. But let's be real, <laughs> when we're holding that trophy, no one's going to complain. So it's all about winning. Hmm. It sounds like winning is really important to you. Yeah, because like I said, it is about winning. But what I don't like more is in PE, when people don't really try it. We're there to improve, we're there to win, we're there to get better. So why are people not putting in effort? Right, so that was Mr. Prover, live and direct. And now you're probably familiar with that, especially if you find that there are moments where you always feel like you need to prove yourself. He always felt as, that, as if he had to go the extra mile and he had to prove himself. And also it can manifest itself in a way where you don't really care about the feelings of other people. You just want to get the task done, sometimes to the detriment of the friends or the people that you're working with. And also it can actually manifest in you not necessarily enjoying your successes because you're always focused on what the next thing is and you don't get to celebrate your wins. <laughs> right, so I've introduced you to a couple of our friends, the avoider, the doubter and the prover. We don't need to meet all of them because I told you they're not that nice people, but it's an idea and a way for you to get an idea of the different mind traps that we have. So I want you to really start thinking about this and thinking about what are the biggest mind traps that you have? Are there any ones that you're particularly familiar with? Now for me, I know the prover and the martyr are big ones in my life. I often find that the mind traps that manifest themselves the most are to do with those and they share those characteristics. But once you identify which ones you're most familiar with, it's easier to recognize them and then you can use processes like the CCC to make sure you're getting out of the box and being at your best more of the time. Right, so as we advance in this programme, like I'm always saying, <laughs> I'm going to get a bit annoying, but I keep on saying it. Please keep doing your home learning tasks, keep being engaged in the workshops with your teachers and keep trying to improve. Because if I had these techniques when I was your age, it would have been a lot easier for me to get out of the box. But it would have made it a lot easier when it came to things like exams, because I wouldn't have been in the box, but I wouldn't have been listening to that doubter <laughs> or that martyr or those negative thoughts and judgmental thoughts that were telling me that I couldn't do it and there was too much work to do. Instead, I would have been able to get out of the box and get myself in an environment where I feel more positive and I can work and be at my best more of the time. So my friends, until next time, but for now, keep working hard, keep doing the progression task and keep trying to be at your best.